Dr. Ted Venema Talks Audiology, the educational whiteboard series brought to you by Next Gen Hearing. Hi, I'm Ted Venema, here to talk to you today about hearing aids and how they are digital and how they are digitally programmed. Last time we talked about hearing aids and their use of something called compression. You'll recall that this meant that today's hearing aids amplify soft sounds by a lot and loud sounds by little or nothing at all. And the reason we do that is because of the special and unique requirements of sensory neural hearing loss. The retina in quotes of the ear is damaged and so as a result they can't hear the soft sounds but yet loud sounds are just heard, heard just as loud loudly as they are by a normal hearing person. Well, let's move beyond that topic today to talk about how hearing aids are programmed. And like any computer, they are no exception. The results are stored onto their digital chip. Today's hearing aids are all digital. Hearing aid programs are saved onto the chip inside the hearing aid. Why would that be necessary? Well, let's look at figure one. If you're looking at the first figure here, you'll see a picture of someone's hearing loss. The X's and O's on the left-hand side of that figure, showing you the audiogram or test results from someone with typical presbycusis. Presbycusis is hearing loss due to aging, and it's by far the most common cause of sensory neural loss today. Presbycusis usually shows hearing loss in the treble frequencies. Better hearing in the bass, poorer hearing for high-pitched treble sounds. We call that the trouble with treble. At any rate, if that's the case, hearing aids should be programmed uniquely in order to provide very little amplification for bass because the person's hearing is good in the bass and lots of amplification for treble. So if you look at the right side of that diagram, you'll see a hearing aid's response to that hearing loss. You'll see different bands or channels in this hearing aid. Hearing aids today all are multi-band or multi-channel. What does this mean? In English it means hearing aids can sculpt or shape their sound so as to provide very different amounts of amplification for different pitches. You'll see by the right hand side of the figure that it's like a mirror image of the hearing loss portrayed on the left side of the figure. The hearing loss goes down in the treble. As a result, the hearing amplification increases in the treble. The unique needs of the person with the hearing loss are stored into the hearing aid chip so that the hearing aid can provide literally a mirror image of the person's hearing loss. This is why hearing aids require a prescription, just like glasses. Hearing aids are fit by audiologists and hearing instrument practitioners who are skilled in the art of programming hearing aids and of course testing hearing. So the story doesn't quite end here though. There's more to it because there's always background noise. Speech in noise. Listening to speech in background noise is one of the hardest things for someone with hearing loss. It's even hard for people with normal hearing. It remains the number one complaint of people with hearing loss who wear hearing aids. How are we addressing this? With different programs. Before I mentioned how hearing aids can be programmed to provide different amounts of amplification for bass versus mids versus treble pitches, well, we can also store different programs in a hearing aid. So we can store different amounts of amplification across the frequencies that would be required in different listening situations. Look at figure two. Figure 2 is showing you two different programs for a digitally programmable hearing aid. One program, you'll see the line going across the graph. And let me explain the graph first. It's got the horizontal axis, has frequency on it. The vertical axis shows you amounts of amplification in decibels. And so program 1 is shown by a solid line, and program 2 is shown by a dotted line. What do you see as the differences between these two lines? Well, the program for listening in quiet is shown by the solid line. You're seeing lots of amplification for bass, mids, and trebles, let's say, whatever. It's just a fictitious picture here. 
And that would be for listening in quiet. Well, what about for listening in noise? Well, the listener can toggle to that second program. And what is it doing? It's providing less amplification in the bass and more amplification in the treble. So that way the hearing aid can act like a teeter-totter. In quiet, it can amplify one way, and then in noise, it can change the different amplifications it's doing. Why would that be necessary? Well, think about speech. Vowels and consonants. What tells you what the words are? That what is the consonants. High-pitched sounds like sh, s, t, k. Think of the letters s, f, k, th, ch, as in church, speech. It's these high-pitched sounds that tell you what the word is. Well, in background noise, if you switch to program two, the dotted line, you can see that you're getting more amplification for the treble, which is good because now you're amplifying those consonants more in background noise, and you're also decreasing some of the bass. Why would you want to do that? Because the hubbub and chatter of background noise is usually low pitch. And background noise consists mostly of low frequency, low pitched sounds. The hubbub and babble. Blah, 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 blah. So you're decreasing the noise and increasing the elements of speech that you want to hear mostly. And that's what you're going to use in noise. Hearing aid programs don't stop there. You can use, have a program stored for specific requirements on the telephone. Hearing aids can have a program stored for the specific listening requirements for music. Eine kleine Nachtmusik. You can have all different programs on a hearing aid stored and saved and the listener is given a remote control whereby he or she can toggle amongst the different programs. The story doesn't end there. Hearing aids today also use Bluetooth streaming for your iPod iPad, television, it's remarkable. Can you see where those mail order hearing aids just don't quite cut it? There's even more to the story. We'll talk about that in the next segment dealing with directional microphones and digital noise reduction. So now we've covered compression in hearing aids and we've covered programming in hearing aids and stored programs in hearing aids for different listening environments. Next time we'll talk about the unique requirements for listening to speech and noise. Directional mics, digital noise reduction. Until next time, see you later.